clinical presentation of tibinafin induced severe liver injury and the value of laboratory monitoring, a critically appraised topic by Owen Kramer and Jörg Albrecht. We hinged our case on a patient with onychomycosis who needed a 90-day treatment with tibinafin but could not make it back to the customary six-week follow-up laboratory check. Tabinafin causes severe hepatotoxicity or severe drug-induced liver injury. It's a rare event that's estimated to occur in 1 to 50,000 to 1 to 120,000 prescription. It usually occurs within the first to six weeks and is idiosyncratic, which means that it's neither predictable nor preventable. Transient liver function test abnormality occur in 1% of the patients on tabinafin and normalize on therapy. The etiology of all these liver function abnormalities is unclear. Liver function tests are recommended at the beginning of tabinafin therapy by the FDA and the British National Formulary, but only the BNF recommends them every four to six weeks during therapy. For a review like this, it's worthwhile to review the characteristics of a monitoring test. A monitoring test needs to be practical, it needs to have impact on outcome, and it needs to identify problems before they are clinically obvious. If it does neither, it has no utility. The goal of our review was to characterize the clinical presentation of DLI in patients on tabinafin and to evaluate whether monitoring can be done effectively. Based on the liver tox database of the National Institute of Health, we conducted a literature review for which we additionally searched MBase and MEDLINE via PubMed from the origin to 4th of April 2016. We also identified relevant papers through hand search of the references of the collected article. All papers were reviewed by two reviewers. Papers were screened based on abstract and title, but the papers who consisted of abstracts only were excluded for lack of clinical details. All potentially relevant papers were reviewed in full. There were no restrictions on language, and we excluded all reports of hepatic dysfunction if they described clinical symptoms and or physical findings or explicitly described the patient are symptomatic. The selection criteria brought us from 249 papers after duplicates were removed to 38 papers who were, which were included in our qualitative census. Those 38 papers described 173 cases of tabinafin-induced DLI, 69 cases with which had clinical symptoms were included. These papers were often incomplete. It is customary for case reporting of adverse event. The dose of tabinafin was 250 mg for all patients. We found that the mean time of symptom development was 30 days with a range of 5 to 84 days. It was only in 33 cases that this data was available. The outlier at 84 days or 12 weeks had normal level function test at week 9. A little bit more surprising that we found that it took a mean of 15 days for patients to seek medical attention. The range was significant and ranged from same day presentation at the doctor's office to waiting for 42 days for an appointment. This did not include an outlier who saw a doctor only after two years. She had taken tabinafin, developed jaundice, discontinued the drug, and then waited two years to present for itch that persisted after jaundice had subsided. We found the symptoms of drug-induced liver injury to be very similar to what's been reported in the literature. It's jaundice and icterus, flu-like symptoms, dark urine, nausea and vomiting, abdominal pain, weight loss. But we found that a surprising number of patients had itch, often generalized, and it occurred even before liver function test abnormalities were detected. In conclusion, DLI is dangerous, which is well known, is rapidly evolving with a minimum of five days based on the cases that we saw. It's universally symptomatic, with generalized pruritus as a common symptom. It's life-threatening. 10% of the patients need liver transplant or die. It clusters in the first six weeks of treatment. 
at four weeks most of the half patients were clinic half of the patients were clinically sick while at six weeks the overwhelming majority were symptomatic with a minimum of five days or even ten days time from normal labs to open DLLI, there's no good time point to monitor patient took an average of two weeks to see physicians after symptom developed a number of them for scheduled visits we think that it may have been the false security of monitoring that may have led to delays of presentation to physicians. However, monitoring of DLI is controversial at best. The FDA does not recommend it for dimenafin and fa it failed when recommended for troglitazone, which is a diabetes medication that causes liver failure as well. Any study like this has serious limitations. There's underreporting in the literature, and even the FDA it sees only 10% of the cases. However, the FDA reported more transplant deaths in 2001 than we saw in the literature 2017. However, 6 of 69 of the patients with a severe drug induced liver injury in our series died or needed transplant, which is about the number expected, suggesting a representative sample. In addition, our recommendations are the same that the FDA has made based on their data. Conclusion: There is no good time point for monitoring patients on dopinafine. Four to six weeks makes no sense. At four weeks, the majority is clinically sick and labs are useless. At six weeks, almost everyone is sick. DLLI may take only five days to develop, thus between four and six weeks, patients may be either healthy or be waiting for transplant. Baseline lab, however, may be helpful to us liver function test changes on therapy because those have to be assessed based on the baseline liver function test results and not based on absolute values. It also helps to diagnose Gilbert's disease, which, can, um, which is a chronically elevated bilirubin with no pathological value that can be quite confusing when monitoring for drug-induced liver injury. Patients should be warned about the symptoms of drug-induced liver injury and the symptoms to warn about abdominal discomfort, yellow eyes, nausea and malaise, as well as generalized itch. Patients should then be told to stop the therapy and see a doctor. Thank you.